people all day. I realized I have done about 100 apéro hours and I have not used my bottle of Bonal, so I took it out today. Um, it just happens to be peach season because it's June, uh, June something or other. It's almost the longest day of the year. There's a lot of peaches at the market, so um, it was interesting this morning, I was watching a woman on French television make a dessert and she was peeling all these kiwis and using them in this dessert. And I was like, why are you making a kiwi dessert when there's all these peaches and cherries and nectarines at the market? And apricots too. Um, my refrigerator's full of stuff. Um, summer fruit because I buy way too much and I have to keep uh, putting it in there so it doesn't rot. Uh, Roman's parents are really charming. They didn't ever put fruit in the refrigerator when it was ripe and it would start rotting. And I said, why don't you put it in the fridge? And they kind of liked um, cutting around all the rotten pieces and eating. I think it reminded them of, you know, hard, more difficult days. <laughs> so um, that was a very interesting movie. I did learn a really, speaking of refrigerators, um, if you live in France or if you live in Europe, I learned a really great formula today. It's not for, a, or this week, it's not for a cocktail, but we have a big problem in France with cloudy glassware, and maybe you can see it. Um, versus this one is not so cloudy. Um, a lot of people over the years, especially in the United States, have recommended all these products to me that of course aren't available in France. Um, but they also don't work because I've tried them here and it doesn't. The cal calcare, as it's called, calcium, um, is really tough. It's very hard. Once, it, once the glass gets cloudy, there's nothing you can do. Um, I've tried everything, believe me. However, so I had the guy here fixing my uh, refrigerator twice, and he was really nice. Um, he just, he's actually, he gave me a cell phone number. He's like, I want you to call me if there's a problem. I'm like, wow. So that's more important than having an auto mechanic or a massage therapist as a, as a good contact, having the refrigerator repair guy. So I bet my dishwasher does not, it's the same brand as my refrigerator, and it just does a terrible job washing dishes it always leaves things dirty and it also leaves things cloudy i've tried all the different things you put in your dishwasher so he told me this if you live in france you can thank me later or thank him later um i think i forgot what his name was sorry if you're watching um but he said to buy the cheapest dishwasher tablets do not buy the multi ones the ones that are like three in one or four in one he said to put dishwasher salt in it, which you can buy in France in these kilo boxes. They usually sell them four kilos at a time and you have to be ready to carry that home because it's about 10 pounds. Um, but you have to put one of these in your dishwasher. And then he said also use rinse agent. So I bought this natural rinse agent. So I'm gonna try it and hopefully I won't have that many, I won't have to ruin, I won't have so many ruined glasses. So, <clears throat> Those are the big issues for me right now. Um, here is getting my glassware in order. Um, so this drink is very fun. It's, I didn't really know what to call it, but I'm gonna call it a bourbon peach cooler. Um, you could probably call it a smash because you smash the peaches, or you could call it, there's a drink in Drinking French that has orange juice in it with the same profile. Um, and I call it a breeze because it felt really breezy and it, made, it was chilly and nice. Um, but today it's, it probably looks a little dark because I think there's going to be a big thunderstorm very soon. So if you hear a loud noise, um, I didn't drop something. It's the probably thunder coming and I'm supposed to have dinner tonight with friends. Um, I had dinner with a friend for lunch today with a friend and afterwards she told me that she has COVID. Was, <laughs> but she's over it. I was like, ah, and here there's not any social distancing and we were inside a restaurant. Um, and so forth so hope I'm okay and I know she's not watching because she doesn't have Instagram so, <laughs> and now it's starting to pour rain so nice to see you anyway the base of this cocktail one of the bases is Bonal and Bonal this is backwards because this is the cameras in the selfie mode so um, somebody told me once my I had an eyes out shirt and the logo was on the wrong side anyhow this is Bonal and it's made in France. It was founded, started, um, the guy who started making it was in 1865. And he was an orphan that the Frère Chartreuse, the brothers that make Chartreuse, the monks, they took in to their abbey. And he became a doctor um, and he started making medicines out of the local herbs. And 
Bonal is made from the local herbs, and now it's, it's also made with gentian and quinoa. Qui quinoa, no, can cantina. Wait, <laughs> this is why I don't do that many lives anymore. I'm losing my mind. Gentian's a very bitter root, and uh, chinchona or uh, cantina is quinine, which is what's in tonic water. Uh, used to. Used to, people used to feel that quinine was very good for you. A distiller said it's kind of it was like the CBD, uh, the CBD of the 1800s. Uh, it was sort of a cure-all for a lot of things, including malaria. Um, so this has that in it as well as other herbs. But what's very interesting is it has a key on the bottom, and it used to be sold as the key to open up your appetite. They had a big poster. It's a famous poster. If you look for Bonal and tap online, a Bonal ad poster. There was a silhouette of a man drinking Bonal, a glass of Bonal, with these stars going through his digestive system. And some of them are sort of um, coming out the back end or going, sort of concentrating around there because a lot of times the French people are very interested in um, aids for your digestion. Uh, I think that's true in Italy too. So a lot of, they're very into proper digestion, digestion thing, a lot, a lot of discussions about that. Um, a friend of mine who's French told me the other day she couldn't digest garlic which is a new one on me, but so be it. Um, so I didn't make IOLI for her. Um, but this is still being made. Um, it was almost, uh, it had almost gone extinct. And if you've been tuning into these videos, Pierre Olivier from Bonal uh, Distillery, that, I mean, Dolan Distillery, they took over production of it. And it's a pretty sort of obscure, uh, Aperitif, but you can still buy it. You could buy it in America. I know it's available. I have friends that buy it. It's about $20 a bottle, I think. Um, it's very interesting. It's not sweet. Um, it's very, it has like a dried fruit, pruny, grassy, uh, herby, uh, orangey scent. Um, Roy Andres de Groot, who wrote a book about the region, the Auberge of the Flowering Hearth, said it's an acquired taste. Um, but I actually, I like it. I don't find it weird. Um, several people chimed in today. I'll show you what it looks like. It's, you know, it's brown. It's not the most attractive thing, but it reminds me of Amaro in a way. Mm. But it's really quinine-y. It's very tangy. Um, people often say, I don't like sweet drinks. So this drink today has some brown sugar syrup in it, but it also has the Bonal, which is very dry. Um, mm, it's very good. It makes me, it makes me hungry. When I was research, researching drinking French, I actually, there's a whole thing about bitterness. Bitter things make you, are good for your digestion and so forth. And there's a lot of different theories about that. And a lot of them, most of them weren't backed up by a lot of things. They were just by people's feelings. But when you drink something bitter, it does produce more saliva. Um, I'm about to have a gushing for it. <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. Um, it does make you hungry. It makes you salivate. So... I promise not to drool. Um, but several people asked me, they go, what can I use instead? And there really isn't a clear-cut substitute for it. However, you could use something like Dubonnet, which is a French liqueur, uh, French aperitif, I should say, with a, a wine base as well. Um, it has a similar profile, but it's a lot sweeter. It's more berry and juicy. So Dubonnet is a possibility. If you live in the United States, the company that makes Dubonnet there, it's a whiskey company, they just reformulated Dubonnet. Um, they said it was to make it closer to the original with more quinine. Uh, I don't find it very quinine heavy, but um, so be it. Uh, Cap Course is a good substitute. It's very quinine-y. Uh, this is made, it's got like uh, walnut husks in it and cacao bean, cocoa beans and so forth. Um, made in Corsica and it's very similar. So you could use this. I know that people don't want to buy one bottle and you know just to make one cocktail. Um, another thing is you can use Amaro. This is a sort of moderate Amaro. Some Amaros are very, or Amari, are very, very strong and very hard to drink. They're very herbal, um, rough, coarse, brusque. Um, and some are sort of okay. Uh, you know, like Averna is probably one that's very moderate. Um, so if you have, you want to get Averna or this, this one's okay. Um, lastly, our friend vermouth. Vermouth also has a lot of those um, different vermouths or different formulations. Uh, but Dolan vermouth is made 
with some of the same roots, I believe is, it's hard to say exactly. Um, and so you could use red vermouth, you could even use white vermouth. Uh, so those are all possible substitutes for Bonal. But I'm gonna use this today. Um, I do also have to say that um, having this, I love the bottle, I love the label. Uh, I, I love having it in my house, so. <laughs> so I'm not too, uh, so I'm happy to have a bottle. So I'm gonna put my glasses on and Uh, Montenegro Woodwork. Montenegro is a very, um, as my friend Brad Parsons, who often chimes in here, um, you know, he calls that a gateway one. It's very, uh, it's very available. It's not, cha not super challenging. So Montenegro Woodwork, Averna, Nonino. Um, I, you know, there's not a direct substitute. It's like saying, what's a good substitute for Coke? And you could say um, RC Cola. Uh, but Coke people would say, no, that's not the same. So beer would, um, Elizabeth is asking about beer, B-Y-R-R-H. That would work. There's two different beers. Uh, actually, there's three different formulas made. Um, hi, Brad Parsons. Um, um, beer, there's one called the Gran Canquina, which they say is the original recipe, which they just re-released a few years ago. And it has a like an old fashioned label. Um, and that would work. It's very berry for, it's more berry forward, uh, juicy, and it doesn't have berries in it. I believe it's very juicy grapes. Um, so that would work as well. Um, it's just not as bitter. So um, give it a try. But let me know in the comments how it works out, how they work out. Cause I love hearing comments from people who have tried different things. Cause people often ask me about trying different things and recipes and I can't try every, when I write a book, I often try different possibilities, but today I just came up with this cocktail and I didn't try it with a lot of different things. So here we go. I look good in that color. It's kind of black color. Um, I actually went shopping today. I was, when I had lunch with a friend, I went to a Monopoly and they had shirts. So I thought I need a new shirt if I'm gonna do a, another Instagram live after hour. What is the shelf life of Bonal? Uh, probably about a month. Keep it in the refrigerator. It's like vermouth, fortified wine. It's not high alcohol. The higher the alcohol, the longer it keeps. I'm gonna have to put my glasses on again. It's only, it's 16% alcohol, which is pretty low. A lot of wines, not a lot, but several wines are 15% alcohol, which is sort of a higher, but 16 is not that high. So keep it in the fridge. Probably keeps for a month or so, you know, maximum. Um, there was, it was interesting because someone wrote to me, you know, vermouth, you're supposed to use it within two to three weeks, keep it refrigerated. Someone's like, I'm going to throw all mine out. I'm like, don't throw it away. Um, you can use it to like deglaze pans when you're cooking, add to sauce, add to stews, um, or whatever. There's a lot of uses for it. Um, don't throw stuff away. Use it, please. I love to use stuff up. Yes, more of these perishable things in half bottles. Someone's saying they wish they did. Um, the, one interesting thing is when bon, uh, Dolan Vermouth was starting to be, the distributor for Don, uh, Dolan Vermouth said for the American market, please do half bottles because people use them for cocktails. In Europe, people drink vermouth, glasses of vermouth on the ice and Americans don't. So presumably they go through a lot more of it. Um, that said, I've never seen, I've never been to a cafe that had a bottle of vermouth in the refrigerator. They always keep them out at the back of the bar. And they also um, usually keep them for several months, I'm sorry to say. So um, yes, my refrigerator is working again. I emptied it twice, so I have a very clean refrigerator. So to make this drink, uh, peaches. It's peach season, yay. I love summer fruits. And the great thing about France is they're everywhere. The first of the season, they're never good. They're kind of dry and hard and expensive. And then they come and they're ridiculously available at the markets. So I'm gonna start with three good sized slices of peach. And I peel them. This is a pretty small peach, so I might, I might add an extra one. So, three slices of peach. And then you can chop them up if you want. 
give him a boost. And I'm actually gonna add that, but it's three slices of medium peach. This is kind of, this is a pretty small peach. Okay, next up, this is brown sugar syrup called Muscovado syrup. I made it this morning. It's basically natural dark brown sugar, um, or you can use golden brown sugar. Um, Usually Muscovado sugar is only sold as one color, I believe. Uh, you can use dark or light. Um, half and half, uh, sugar to water, equal parts volume, and then heat it to a boil. When the sugar is dissolved, then you stick it in the fridge. So, I can't see anything. I think I need new glasses. All right, so I got, I'm gonna use a half an ounce of this Muscovado sugar syrup. and then half an ounce of Bonal. And it's funny because when you drive through the French Alps, and when we were driving from Chartreuse to Chambéry, where they make the vermouthie, past this um, town, there was this huge building that said Bonal, and it's the old Bonal distillery that they don't use anymore, and it's just empty, I think, or office spaces, but they kept the sign up, so it was very cool. So half ounce of Bonal. And then I'm gonna muddle this. I got my muddler. You can use a fork, you can use a spoon. And you wanna get it pretty mashed up. I've seen uh, people use mint in these kind of drinks. Um, I like mint, but um, that said, I think, and I'm, I'm putting myself in this category, so don't worry about, uh, I'm not offending anybody, but Americans often like to add things to things. Um, and Roman's always reminding me not to add things. He's like, no, no, pure, pure, pure is good. I'm like, well, do you think this needs cinnamon? He's like, pure. Uh, so you could add mint to it if you want or something else, but pure. Pure is sometimes good. And then lastly, I'm almost out of my super nice uh, bourbon. So until I get back to the US and get more, I'm gonna use this, which is pretty good too. And then two ounces of bourbon. So to recap, there's two ounces of bourbon, a half ounce of brown sugar or muscovado sugar syrup, a half ounce of bonal, and three medium to large peach slices. I'm gonna wash my hands because I don't like being sticky. I told a bartender once, I said, well, I always wanted to be a bartender, but it would drive me crazy because I don't like being sticky. And he said, well, if you're doing, doing your job right, you won't be sticky. So it's a good idea to clean your workspace. Where the hell did you get Knob Creek? I brought it over from the US. Um, you could probably get it in France. Um, I just don't know where, um, but there's uh, several stores that just sell whiskey. So, all right, I'm gonna grab some ice. In my super clean freezer. All right, so I'm going to give this a really good shake, and I want to shake it really well because um, there's peach puree in there. I'm gonna use a, a glass that doesn't have, where is Roman? Uh, Roman is at work today and he's coming home soon and we're going out for dinner with friends. And I hope everybody distances themselves properly. Uh, so when I made the strawberry margarita last week, I kind of said, well, you know, I, I learned something during the confinement. Some, I was watching some bartender and he was saying, if you don't have a lot of ice, just dump the whole thing in the glass, which actually works really well. Um, However, I'm gonna use a strainer because um, the strainer on a, on a, this is a terrible, this is not a cocktail strainer, so you'll have to bear with me. The cocktail strainers are pointed um, and I am, 
I am someone who's just happy to have a freezer. Uh, okay, world's slowest cocktail. <clears throat> but I have good news. If you watched a lot of these Instagram lives, there's only one guest I've had on twice, and it's Margo from Combat Bar. And Combat is reopening, or has reopened, and I'm gonna get a cocktail shaking lesson from her next week. So I'll be live at Combat. So you can see there's a lot of pulp in there, so that's why I'm giving it a good strain. I'm actually, I'm doing three remotes next week. I'm getting out of the house, so you don't have to worry about the weather. Uh. And it was beautiful, summery weather all week, and today it is not as nice. It's pouring rain, actually. That's okay. I actually like the rain. There's a word for people that like rain. Um, I saw it once. I was like, I should have wrote that down, but people who like being around the rain, it calms us down. So for garnishes, uh, you can use cherry. I got some really nice fresh cherries. Um, I've got mint as well, fresh mint. Um, so you can use it, whoops, whatever you want. And ice, I have ice. People said you should do cooking videos. I'm like, I can barely do a drink video. No fresh ice in the glass. Yes, Brad, fresh ice. I'm freshening it up. <laughs> There's a great word in French um, called scruté, which means to be scrutinized. So, you see scruté. I think I just put too much in the glass. So out of, out of camera, I'm gonna take a sip. Mmm, it's very good, powerful. But that's what I like about bourbon, it's like <laughs> So I also have my tweezers that Margo from Combat um, was using so deftly. And my goal in life is to grow up and be like Margo. Um, for those of you that didn't tune in, Margo has a bar called Combat and she has the most amazing cocktail shake I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and I love her bar. It's one of my favorite bars in the world. And she came on the show and she shook a cocktail and everyone was like, and I was, so she said, I said, well, when this is all over, when we can be together, I'm going to come in and will you give me a lesson? She said, sure. That's going to be Tuesday night next week at the same time. So a mint garnish. You could also use a cherry if you want. Um, whoops. I've got a double stem there. So there you go, this is a bourbon peach cooler. It's very refreshing, I just had a sip. When I said I was going to dump some of it out, I didn't. Mmm. It's good and it's lively. It's a, uh, the bourbon, um, people don't use the word, well maybe they do, um, the word spicy for bourbon. Um, often people say rye is very spicy. Um, I love rye whiskey. Uh, it's very spicy and smoky, and it probably wouldn't work in this cocktail like bourbon, because bourbon has a sort of smooth sweetness that has a much, um, has a nicer affinity uh, than rye whiskey to me. And that's saying a lot, because I'm a big rye whiskey fan. Good thing Roman can't hear me talking about Margot. That's okay. I, um, it's okay. A friend of mine, um, whose name I won't mention, but her boyfriend is a police officer and police officers, um, he's an investigator. And I met him and he was super handsome and super nice. And I told my friend, I said, I'm gonna steal your boyfriend. She's like, you can't have him. So I came home and I broke, I said, Roman, I'm leaving you. <laughs> so, so I'm leaving him for a very um, attractive and very nice police. But that's it, no, I'll stay with Roman for a while. He stuck, he stuck with me. Let's see if there's any questions. 
So I did discuss uh, Bonal. Chinar, um, someone asked about using Chinar, which is a, an Italian Amaro made from uh, um, artichokes. Uh, chinar is pretty sharp to me. I, I wouldn't use it. I mean, you could, it'll probably take over the drink a little more than I would like, but you're welcome to use it. Someone's asking about Amer Picon. Yes, Amer Picon is similar. You could use that if you can get it. That's not available in America easily. Uh, they don't export it because there's an ingredient in there that the FDA won't allow. Um, it was interesting. I was talking to a friend who has makes Amer Gentian, uh, gentian liquor, and he goes, well, we can't export it because the bottle's a different size. So where in Paris do I buy my spirits? Uh, I get them from, in my book, Drinking French, there's a list of different places I go to to buy liquor that I recommend. Um, one of them is La Maison du Whisky. Uh, one of them, really, I love um, Les Caves de Roy, uh, the Caves of Roy, which is in the 18th arrondissement. Um, and those are two good places. Um, there is um, a gin place, it's over by uh, uh, Leal, and I forget the name, it's like G303. Um, it's terrific. It's my new, one of my new favorite places. I, I put that in my book too, and I can't remember the name offhand, but I'm gonna have another sip of this drink. Mmm. Mmm. <sighs> oh, glad you like drinking French Uncommon Muse. Um, I like it too. I was very happy when the book came out, because when you write a book, it takes a long time. It takes a year or two years sometimes to write it, and then it goes into production, and I happen to have a really good publisher. If any of them are watching, hello, hi Julie and Betsy um, and Allison, if you're watching. Um, and they do a very good job. They do a very good job with spirits books. So I was very happy to work with them on my book. And I've gotten a lot of great feedback from you also. Um, especially some of you have started a, an uh, it's a Instagram account. <laughs> you're like, he doesn't remember the word Instagram account. Um, uh, it's our, uh, Arabaz at Acro Hour, and a lot of people are sharing drinks there that they make from this and from the book. So you're welcome to follow them as well. That's at Acro Hour. Um, someone spent $500 on liquor um, because of me and my book. Um, well, I think I got you beat. <laughs> so I, I spent a little more. Um, it's kind of funny when you write a book, you spend a lot of money testing or uh, buying ingredients. Um, and you might use a tablespoon of them. And a friend of mine, Rick Rogers, he writes cookbooks for other people. He's sort of a ghostwriter, and he moved. And he sent me a picture, he had all these bottles of liquor that like an ounce had been taken out. But that's sort of the, the, the name of the game in cookbook writing. Uh, you just have recipe writing, you just have a lot of stuff left over, and you buy it, and it's great. I have a lot of, I have a good liquor cabinet. So when people say, what's, what are substitutes for banal? I can pull them out. I go, this, 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 and this. The problem is I have to put them all back. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As mentioned, I've got a couple. I'm going off-brand or off-site next week. On Monday, I'm going to go visit my friend Benoit. And he has a really great cider shop in Paris. Uh, it's like more of a cafe. It's a cafe and store. Um, I wrote about him on my blog a while back because I was so excited. And French people drink a lot of cider, sparkling hard cider, but they don't really take it seriously. It's not considered uh, something you drink with crepes, and it's sort of something you buy at the supermarket. They don't. It's not something that's that's uh, been exalted, I should say. Um, and there's some really good ciders made in France as well as the rest of Europe and in America and elsewhere now. So. He has this place called La Cidrerie, and he's got amazing ciders, and he's really, really, really nice as well. So, and it's a place you, if you come to Paris when things open up, I think it's open to uh, Europeans now. Um, you can go there and get like a sampling of ciders. He'll give you a taste of stuff. He's just a super nice guy. So I'm gonna be there on Monday. On Tuesday, uh, en principe, in principle, I will be with Margot at Combat. Uh, learning how to shake, so I've got to. I'm going to be lifting weights to get my arms to um, to shake like she can. And so far, uh, on Friday next week, I will be with Moko from Moko Nuts, and I had a really great drink at her uh, 
her and her husband, Omar, sandwich shop the other day. And I said, will you please come on my show and we'll make this drink for people. And it's a non-alcoholic drink made with cucumbers. So she goes, people drink it and they think it needs gin. I said, well, I get a lot of people saying they want non-alcoholic drinks. So that'll be on Friday. And I might sneak over a bottle of gin and we can taste it with gin. Um, she runs her own res her restaurant with her husband and they have two kids. So she could probably use a drink on Friday afternoon. So I will indulge her. All right, I will see you next week. Have a good weekend, take care of yourselves. Um, I know some people are out and about um, all over the world, the United States, um, places are opening up and um, things are changing. Um, take care of yourselves, take care of other people. Um, I wear a mask uh, and people don't wear masks that much anymore in Paris. I do, um, I'm telling people to stock up on them because they're all on sale um, just in case something happens. But it's kind of a, it's a good idea to wear a mask, um, help protect other people um, and they can help protect you. Uh, drink responsibly as well. Um, I'm just gonna have half of this drink. And Roman's gonna get home from work and I'll let him finish the other half. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.